I'm Christina and I'm here with some tips and tricks to help you move. So I've moved around a lot from San Francisco to Chicago to New York to Dallas and all across Europe. So I feel like I've gotten the packing and the moving down to almost a science. Um, hopefully my tips will help you in your move. So I have six tips for you guys. My first one is to organize and plan. Plan, 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 plan. I can't stress this enough. So you want to kind of get your head into that mindset of moving. You want to think about what stuff you're going to organize uh, into the sort pile of keep and get rid of, donate. So where are you going to go and find these places to donate? Are they close by? Are they far away? What about those batteries that you found behind your couch a few days ago. You can't just throw those away. Uh, so I would go online and look at donation places, recycling places, and the like. My second tip is movers. Now this may seem really obvious, but depending on if you're going to go with a big company or if you're going to go with a family company or if you're just going to go with somebody local like with pods and then just have local movers uh, put your stuff into the truck and then take it out, um, you really want to do your research. So ask your friends, ask your family, ask your family's friends and see who they liked. Um, ask them if they broke anything and how did they respond to uh, any issues that you that they might have had with those movers. Then go online and do your research there. See what the reviews say. Um, how do they respond to people that had something broken, for example? Were they uh, courteous? Were they really rude? Uh, all those things factor in. My next tip is for boxes, how to get boxes. So you can get boxes pretty much anywhere that they sell them, like Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, but my favorite place to go get boxes is for free because <laughs> they can add up really, really quickly. Um, go to a warehouse, go to a grocery store, go to an electronics store and ask them, hey, when's your next shipment in? And can I get those boxes that you will most likely just throw away? And I bet you anything that those managers are going to be like, yes, please take them. <laughs> and they'll tie them up for you and give you a whole mess of them uh, to take home and use. So huge, huge help on that one. Uh, my next tip, my fourth tip is using a notebook. So I love this one. Every move that I have done, I have used a notebook to, and this is why. So uh, with every box I number, I don't know if you can see uh, like that one, 29 um, <laughs> or 34. Uh, every box I number and then I have this corresponding notebook that I also number and then I itemize each thing that goes into the box. So uh, it doesn't even have to be like specifically, but it could be like, oh, um, everything that I have on the shelf in the kitchen, uh, all my knickknacks or whatnot. So use that notebook as a guide because I bet you anything, once you get to your de destination, you're going to want to find your swimsuit if it's 90 degrees and you just made some friends and they invited you to the beach and all of a sudden you're scrambling because you can't find your swimsuit. So itemize, have that list. It will help you tremendously, um, tremendously. Next tip I had is consider the time of year. So I know this could be a little difficult, especially for like college kids, um, because it's usually during the summer, you guys have to go uh, to your dorms and whatnot. But if you can at all plan, uh, plan around the seasons. So movers definitely charge you more on the time of year. And it's also harder to get those really good movers for uh, that time of year that you're wanting. For example, like summer. That is the biggest time of year for people to move. Uh, I would recommend fall. Even winter, if you can deal with it, I mean, there might be some snow, but uh, if you can 
deal with working around that snow, then good on you. <laughs> My next tip is for pets. Remember, remember, pets are travelers too. So you really want to think about how am I going to bring my pet with me? Am I going to take him by plane? Am I going to take him by train? Am I going to take him by automobile? Um, all these things make a really big difference because planes have restrictions. Like some of them, they won't even let you take them out of their carrier. Uh, some of them cost extra to take them with you. Uh, some of them have restrictions on the carrier size. Can they fit under the chair? Um, in the car, for example, I have a cat. His name is Elliot. <laughs> Prime Minister Elliot Dingleberry. And he has traveled with me four times already. And let me tell you, it makes such a difference for the size of the carrier. He, the first time I traveled, I had a smaller carrier, which was perfect because he was a kitten. And then he got older and I couldn't use that carrier at all. He wouldn't even go in it when I had it at home, even when if I put treats in it or something like that. So once I got a bigger carrier, it made all the difference. And don't forget to also take your pet to the vet before you go and travel because you don't know how your pet's gonna travel and, and, and react to traveling, a lot of them to get a lot of anxiety. And that anxiety causes anxiety for you, for the person you're traveling with. It just does not help at all. So hopefully the vet can help advise you on um, some tips with regards to that. Um, so those are my six tips. Uh, organize and plan, remember to research your movers, use a notebook, and remember pets are travelers too. Now, did I miss anything? I, I, I don't know, you tell me. Um, I would love to hear what you guys have to say about any tips you might have, um, any horror stories you might have from traveling. Let me know in the comments down below. I would love to hear and read about them. Thanks so much, bye. And if you enjoyed this video and are interested in following my life and journey, be sure to like and subscribe.